This is ABC 15 Mornings. An officer shot and flown to the hospital. A live report just minutes away. Mixed messages. States have very different stages of the pandemic. Different states with different rules for COVID. Only on ABC 15 Mornings. By bringing the care to them, we, we take it to another level. A new option for people who don't want to sit in the ER. I'm Joe St. George in the U.S.-Mexico border. Coming up, we go inside the shelters responsible for welcoming migrants to the United States. What are they getting? What aren't they getting? Coming up. Get your popcorn ready. The Footprint Center will be rocking tonight for a rematch of the NBA Finals. A lot going on here in town. A lot to be excited about. We are thrilled about it, and we're happy you're waking up with us. I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. And I'm Nick Saletti. Let's send things right over to Megan Thompson right now, who's working two traffic oh. alerts on the I-10, Megan. This is the worst spot, really, that we yeah. could ask for two crashes to be. It's the I-10 eastbound as folks are making their way past the Loop 101, likely heading toward the stack and the mini stack. Here's a live view of one of those crashes off to the right hand side. Now I 10 eastbound. This spot is near 67th Avenue. That other crash is near 43rd Avenue, and you see here those brake lights that are building here on the I 10 eastbound at this very early hour, the top of the 6 a.m. hour. So here's a view of those crashes here on the roadway as you're making your way to the stack and all of that red that is building back towards the loop 101 at this point of the morning. So your desert drive time, if you're making your way through that stretch in the next few minutes, the loop 303 to the mini stack that route, your average speed is now right around 30 miles per hour with the drive time already at about 45 minutes. That's not the only crash that we're dealing with right now. We also have the loop 101 northbound near Elliott. That one is off to the right and rule and Broadway Road. Tempe police tell you they can only allow you to make right hand turns in that area. You're, they're asking that you avoid Avoid it altogether due to this crash. You can take McClintock or Mill or Southern Ave or University Drive to get around that one altogether. They expect that one to be about to be about two hours that they'll be out on the scene. I'll keep you posted when we get some more information and we'll get a look at those desert drive times and traffic predictor in a few minutes. But in the meantime, we want to check in with meteorologist Iris Servosio as you are tracking a warm up. Those 80s, yeah. they're returning. Hopefully that makes your drive into work a little more pleasant, knowing that it's going to be a gorgeous day, especially considering all those issues on the roadways this morning. Megan, thank you. Let's talk about that forecast and what's happening right now as you step outside a mixed bag of 40s, 50s and 60s around the valley. We are at 45 degrees in Gilbert, but for example, we're in the 50s in Peoria, then 60s in Scottsdale, and it has to do with some breezes in Scottsdale. Winds gusting near about 15 miles an hour, so a light breeze, it's enough to keep that temperature a little elevated, but that 64 degrees certainly doesn't feel too bad, and it's only going to get better. Now, I do still think we'll cool down a little further, especially as those winds lighten up with temperatures in the 50s to low 60s by the start of the first round of the Phoenix Open. Then as we go through the day, a quick warm up, so plan on a high near 80 this afternoon in Scottsdale and that will hit right around the time the bird's nest gets ready to open 330 is the time for that clear skies wear that sunblock take plenty of water with you hydrate 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 we'll talk about how long these 80s look to stick around in that full seven day forecast it is 603 and happening right now the search is underway for a shooter who shot at a law enforcement officer in Camp Verde and this was near the 260 at Cherry Road. The officer was then flown to Deer Valley Medical Center. That's where Jamie Warren is right now. Jamie, walk us through what happened. So Nick and Kaylee, right now we do not have an update on that officer's condition. They were airlifted here to the hospital in Phoenix late last night. Now normally we would be seeing some sort of law enforcement presence at the hospital. We are not seeing that at this time. However, we do have some video of that initial scene in Camp Verde. The shooting appears to have happened near a gas station there, and according to the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office, they were called to assist with this situation after getting a call that an officer not with YCSO was shot after an altercation with a suspect. They did not provide any additional details about what caused that altercation or what exactly led up to that shooting. They also would not say which department that officer is with, but the Yavapai Apache tribe posted on their Facebook page that they were aware of a situation involving one of their officers. So we are still working to confirm 
that exact detail this morning. Now, after that shooting, the suspect took off on foot. And as of 930 last night, law enforcement officers were still trying to find them. So we don't know if that suspect is in custody or if they are still searching for that person this morning. We are also still working to get confirmation about how that officer is doing this morning. But as soon as we get more details, Nick, we'll be sure to update you. Uh, Jamie, continue working your sources and please let us know if you find out anything new. Meantime, three construction workers are recovering this morning after part of their construction site collapsed. The Chandler Fire Department responding to Intel's Acatillo campus near Dobson and Acatillo Wednesday afternoon. We're told the workers were stuck in an area about 25 feet deep. Thankfully, all of them are expected to be OK. Investigators will be heading back out to the scene today as they work to try to figure out what happened. <laughs> There is definitely a level of uh, effectiveness with it. As we've seen, calls for service for street racing has gone down. Uh, also, those takeovers of intersections have also gone down as well. Making our roads safer, the street racing task force with the Phoenix Police Department giving the city an update on their efforts over the past year. Officers making more than 400 arrests and wrote more than 500 traffic citations. The task force says they've noticed racers are now moving to other parts of the valley, which is why they're now partnering with other agencies to continue their crackdown. Well, if waiting in long lines in your car or maybe standing in a crowded line, even sitting at the doctor's office, hoping to get tested for COVID-19 just seems really risky right now, I want to introduce you to a group of Valley doctors working to revolutionize health care. People don't want to go to a doctor's office. It's scary. It's scary to be um, around folks that, that may or may not be sick. COVID testing at home. This is health care delivered to you. And it's all thanks to a group of doctors based in Arizona. We go out and bring everything in a doctor's office to you to do a real honest to God physical exam. Listen to your, your heart, listen to your lungs, um, look in your eyes, ears, nose, throat, anything that we need to do to make sure that uh, a real physical exam is taking place and you're getting the correct diagnosis and treatment that you really need. You make the appointment and Blue Beckham with Scottsdale Physicians Group or SPGVC says, a healthcare professional shows up at your doorstep. We base um, who comes out to you for, for your specific needs. You know, colds, coughs, we, we send our texts. As uh, the intensity of what you're experiencing gets higher, and in some uh, very rare cases, we've even sent physicians out to take care of our sickest patients. A check of your vitals, along with a quick nasal swab to test for COVID-19, and then the doctor is called to talk with both of you virtually. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what's going on? I have um, a cough that I can't seem to get rid of. Rapid tests for COVID are available, along with monoclonal antibody treatments. And depending on your diagnosis, SPGVC can bring the same level of care you'd find in the hospital to the comfort of your living room. Nobody wants to go sit in an emergency room waiting room. Um, and so by bringing the care to them, we, we take it to another level. And I just want to add patient safety, clearly the overall goal here for this innovative group, as well as keeping more hospital beds available for the very sickest of COVID patients. They tell me they take most insurance. They also say that payment plans are available for those who pay cash out of pocket. And we posted a lot more information for you about the group and their services along with this story at ABC15.com. Happening today, ASU is expected to make its pitch to the Board of Regents to temporarily share their new arena with the Arizona Coyotes. The hockey team is hoping to play home games there through 2025 and would spend millions on upgrades so the venue meets NHL standards. The Coyotes lease agreement with the city of Glendale is ending at the end of the season. ASU says any upgrades wouldn't delay the opening of the arena in November. Meets on the Coyotes celebrating a big win this morning. The Oats beating the Seattle Kraken 5-2 last night. Tomorrow they'll be back in Glendale hosting the Tampa Bay Lightning. I don't know about you, it's a little, little, little anxiety this morning. Maybe you guys are feeling this as well because tonight all eyes are going to be on the Footprint Center for an NBA Finals rematch. Alas, here we are. Our Phoenix Suns <laughs> getting ready to play the Milwaukee Bucks for the first time since the championship in July. So they're coming off a three-game winning streak, our hometown team, and they continue to have the best record in the NBA. Now the Bucks, they're currently ranked fifth and they've won their last four games. This is going to be a good one. Tip-off happens at 8. 
Up next here on ABC 15 Mornings, we have a scam alert for you how criminals are getting even more tech savvy selling stolen checks on the dark web. Plus, the southern border is uh, about to be a major issue at the voting booth this November. Ahead, the human side of the immigration debate. Then costing you more to get revved up for the day. Coffee prices are rising and it appears as though they're not coming down anytime soon. And taking you back out live to that traffic alert, the right lane is blocked still on the I-10 eastbound. This one near 43rd Avenue. That crash near 67th Avenue did clear. But man, your desert drive times are really going to be impacted by this. I'll give you an update before you head out the door. Coming up. Catching you up here on your Thursday morning headlines at 613. Today, the House Democratic Caucus is going to be hearing from former President Barack Obama. He will be speaking to them virtually about the upcoming midterm elections. House lawmakers also hoping to pass pieces of President Biden's Build Back Better plan. Spring training, boy, is it ever fast approaching. Still no movement, though, on the MLB lockout. Negotiations are going to be resuming Saturday after an 11-day break. Owners meetings, they wrap up today in Orlando, while the Players Association sessions in Arizona and Florida are also happening. Well, Instagram is now adding some new safety features. The new Your Activity tab is actually, in essence, going to help you search for your content and search for past comments and delete content in bulk. And then Security Checkup simplifies the steps to secure accounts. And your morning cup of coffee is getting more expensive. Ah, oh, Coffee prices just hitting a 10-year high, and they have nearly doubled since this same time last year. One reason? Reduced output from Brazil, the world's largest coffee producer. Last year, that country was dealing with a drought and also frost issues. 614 last year, Border Patrol encountered nearly 2 million migrants trying to enter the U.S. illegally. So how many have been sent back and how many remain? All new this morning, Joe St. George with an in-depth report on the humanitarian situation at the border. As the country debates immigration, it's important to remember that people die trying to come here. This memorial is on the side of the road in Holtville, California, about 10 miles from the Mexican border. 13 migrants who were being smuggled in a car died in a crash here last year. Crosses, names, now reminders of the dangerous journey. Another reminder is less than a mile from the site, a John and Jane Doe cemetery for the remains of unidentified migrants whose bodies were found near the southern border. Remembering those lost is important context when discussing the migrant surge. Last year, there were around 1.9 million arrests by Border Patrol. That's a record. And while some tried to cross multiple times, around 1 million were immediately expelled. The others, 400,000 or so, are here in the United States awaiting hearings. Once a migrant is apprehended by Border Patrol and they are processed, if they're not sent back to Mexico, or to another country right away, they're allowed to stay in the U.S. for the moment. And the first place they go are makeshift shelters like this. This is the Catholic Charities donation room. And that's where you find men and women like Roy Mendenhall. Nonprofits like Catholic Charities are often tasked by state and federal governments to help migrants who are permitted to stay get necessities before they travel to other parts of the country. They don't have anything. They, you know, not even shoes. The workers and volunteers here providing unique insight into what the country should be doing. I approach it outside of politics. Mindanao says his biggest issue is that there's just too much politics around this topic. Whatever your views are, the people who are legally permitted to stay here, he says, should be given more respect. There's a lot of people, a lot of migrants that come through here that have been separated from their family members. Mindenhall's wish of getting the politics out of this is unlikely to happen. The border is poised to be a major issue in the midterm election this fall. Early data shows 2022 will be very similar to last year when it comes to illegal border crossing attempts. In Holtville, California, I'm Joe St. George. Thanks, Joe. Hey, it's 616. Let's talk about that most accurate forecast as temperatures are running warmer than 24 hours ago in many spots across Arizona, especially in that northern half of our state. We're really feeling a difference in spots like Flagstaff and at the Grand Canyon, where temperatures are about 10 to 25 degrees warmer than they were at this time yesterday. That puts you above freezing in the high country. We're talking that temperature of 36 degrees. I mean, still cold enough for a coat, but at least it's above freezing. That's something, right? If anything, just kind of a mental thing where it's not as cold and it's maybe 
a little more comfortable when you step outside in the teens to 20s across northeast Arizona. Meanwhile, here in the central parts of our state, we're waking up to 52 degrees at Phoenix Sky Harbor with temperatures in the low 60s out of Bullhead City and at Lake Havasu. We've got a mixed bag of 50s, 60s and some 40s around the valley too. some of the cooler spots. Chandler in the low 40s right now. It's 47 in Goodyear, mid 50s in Glendale and 54 in Mesa with Phoenix Sky Harbor, as I said, at 52 degrees. We start off with these chilly temperatures, but like the last few days, dress in layers and layers that you can quickly shed because look at these temperatures by this afternoon. The 80s are back for the first time this year, and we're talking temperatures that are about 11 degrees above the average high for this time of year. Glendale tops out at 81. We'll make it to 81 in Phoenix and in Gilbert. Meanwhile, upper 70s in Apache Junction and in Cave Creek. Scottsdale looking to top out at 80 degrees this afternoon. So if you are heading out to the WM Phoenix Open, know that temperatures will start off chilly. And like I said, a sweater that you don't mind kind of carrying around, tying around your shoulder. I think that's the look, right? Maybe not around your waist. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> it's cooler if you're going golfing and you have your, your, your sweater draped over your shoulder. Temperature will be in the 80s by around 3 o'clock. So make sure that you are staying hydrated some light breezes gusts near 15 to 20 miles an hour not too much of a nuisance when it comes to those winds those winds will get a little stronger though on saturday 81 for a high today in phoenix 50s to 60s across that northern half of our state with 70s and 80s in western arizona now the winds will be a nuisance and stronger along the lake a lake wind advisory in place for northwest arizona where gusts will be as high as 45 miles an hour we'll see more breezes or feel more breezes again saturday in the valley but temperatures will stay in the 80s through monday then get ready big changes next week. I mean, we couldn't have timed the Phoenix Open better with warm weather through the weekend and then a big drop in temperatures and rain and snow chances back in our state by the middle of next week. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Let's take you to the ABC 15 Live Drive at 619 now. They have just gotten on to the I-10 eastbound where we're seeing some very early slowing at this time of the morning due to multiple crashes. So this view is near 67th Avenue where you see with those dark skies as we wait sunrise, the brake lights are really bright in this area. So on the ground, this is our vantage point of that slow and go from two separate crashes. Let's take you now to a wide view here, a bird's eye view of that scene from our ADOT cameras. We're seeing a very similar scene on the I-10 eastbound. This shot is near 83rd Avenue. So as I go to your traffic maps, you can see this crash here continues to be an issue. The right lane is blocked right near the stack. That crash near 67th Avenue has cleared, but with both of them, it really caused this, these delays that we're seeing here backed up almost 10 miles from that first crash here all the way past the 101. That's how long you'll be tapping the brakes at this early hour. Your updated desert drive time as you're making your way from the loop 303 to the mini stack right now that average speed is around 33 miles per hour that drive time already is about 41 minutes and as we take a look at traffic predictor we could see by that seven o'clock hour that average speed is not going to improve much for us. It's going to drop to about 29 miles per hour, so even slower. On the I-17 southbound from the 101 to the stack, 56 miles per hour on average, and the 51 from the 101 to the mini stack, that's checking in really nicely at 64 miles per hour on average, Kaylee. All right, Megan, thank you for that. Fine art, fine wine, and good music. Sounds like a good party to me at 624 on your bulletin board. A perfect event for the weekend for any of you looking to relax. Plus trading in a phone and never getting any money or a refund at 638 when no one would answer one man's calls. It was time to dial up our Let Joe Know team. And will it be another hot inflation report? It's 645, some new figures being released. And what happens this morning could affect everything from your credit cards to your mortgage. Plus, the forecast is absolutely perfect, if I do say so myself. <laughs> 648, meteorologist Iris Emerson is back. She's going to deliver her exclusive super seven-day forecast, and this one really is super. Six twenty-four on the bulletin board this morning. A fine event for all you wine lovers out there. The annual Fine Art and Wine Festival returns to Scottsdale, the waterfront, this weekend. Dozens of local artists will be there with their paintings, sculptures, photography, jewelry, you name it. There's also going to be some live music and different wines to sample and chocolate. Admission is just three bucks. For fifteen bucks, you'll get a wine tasting ticket and a souvenir glass. So this runs from ten a.m. to five p.m. Friday through Sunday. Wine, chocolate, music, and more. That is on today's bulletin board. This is such a popular event every oh, year. Oh yeah, and you can see why. Cheers to that. 
625. Mail-related check fraud, that is not new, but now criminals are getting more tech savvy, selling stolen checks on the dark web. Cybersecurity research group say this trend has been on the rise since last summer. I want to show you some pictures here of the checks that have been found on the dark web recovered. Researchers say the thefts happen at home mailboxes, but more often from the blue mailboxes on the street. They take screenshots uh, of the checks uh, and then they start uh, selling it uh, on underground markets that uh, uh, we oversee. Uh, the checks could sometimes be sold uh, without the content, uh, the payee, the date content on it. Well, if you do need to mail a check, experts recommend dropping it off inside at a post office. This morning, Shola police are trying to identify this man who left thousands of dollars at a Safeway on Wednesday. Yes, $6,000 in cash, all of it inside a plastic bag. And you can see it drop as you look right here. It drops to the ground and a woman finds it. She turned it in, thankfully, and Safeway employees there say the man is a regular customer, but none of them know his name yet. We're hopeful that by getting this video out there, there's that bag falling, that someone will know something and get it back to him. Yeah, because you know he's stressing about that oh, this morning. Absolutely. Yeah, gosh. Up next here at 630, let the tournament begin. It is time for the first round of the WM Phoenix Open. If you're going, we have options to get you there so you don't get stuck in traffic. And the hospital can be a scary place, but a sweet ride is helping take kids' minds off. And I'll show you the new addition to Banner Thunderbird ahead at 630. And an officer is shot overnight in Camp Verde, airlifted to a hospital here in Phoenix. I'll have the very latest on this developing situation. And in your most accurate forecast, of course, heat, the big story, the first 80s of the year, and it's staying warm into the weekend. But I'm also tracking some big changes as eyes are on our next storm system. I'm going to show you the changes coming with it in our super seven day forecast.